Welcome to Gone Fishing, a show diving into the cybersecurity threats that surround our highly connected lives. Every human is different. Every person has unique vulnerabilities that expose them to potentially successful social engineering. On this show, we'll discuss human vulnerability and how it relates to unique individuals. I'm Connor Swam, CEO of FinSecurity, and welcome to Gone Fishing. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Gone Fishing. I'm your host, Connor, CEO at Finn, and I am joined once again by the amazing Alexandria Boyd, Director of Sales at OIT. If you haven't seen our previous episodes, we talked about what it's like being a manager, how to build trust and accountability, uh, and also why women are very successful in sales roles. And Alex actually brought a bunch of data that's in the show notes of the previous episode. So, you know, go take a look at it. But Alex, we have you on today. What are we talking about today? Because I know it's a little different than our previous yes. episodes. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this one because I feel like there is a common misconception with tarot. Tarot like tarot cards. Yes, that is what we're talking about today. Um, so, so many times people can think, oh, tarot cards, they're witchy or it's for fortune telling. And I don't know about that. I don't want to, I don't want to get a bad reading. So I don't want to pull the cards. And um that's, that's not how it is at all. You don't have to be psychic to pull tarot cards. Um, it is, I, I call it the act of intuitive tarot. So everyone has intuition, but you don't have to be like a psychic reader to, to pull. You can pull your own tarot cards. Um, each tarot card has a meaning behind it. So when you pull a card, it'll basically pro propose like some questions to kind of start massaging your subconscious and make you start thinking about things, right? So once you pull a card, it's going to start asking you this question. It's going to give you some words to relate to, and then you're going to start applying that card to your life. And naturally, we're going to be thinking about the problem things, things that we need to fix, because when you're thinking about things and you're asking questions, that's, that's, what you're thinking about, right? That's what you're, you're wanting questions on. If something's going good, it's kind of, you know, it's going good. It's chugging along. It's not really, you know, something that needs to bubble up to the surface. So that's all that the tarot cards really do. It kind of stirs that subconscious and the things that, you know, may need to bubble up to the surface for you. So that it can bring your attention to them and you can start working on those things. So I think it's a great practice to do for yourself. You absolutely do not have to have someone else read your cards. You can get a deck, shuffle it. Um, you can just pull one card and kind of go from there. Or if you want to pull three cards and do like a past, present, future spread. Um, and you can think about your pre the past during the past card, your present and the future. So it kind of gives you a more time span of things to kind of look at and work on. But really it's whatever is most comfortable to you. And it's just a great way to do some inner self work and check in with yourself and say, hey, look, you know, what do I need to focus my attention on? Maybe what are some areas that I could be better in? And, you know, what what do I need to focus on for this next quarter or these next few weeks or however many times you want to check in with yourself? Being the witchy woman that I am, I like to do it with the moon cycles. <laughs> so I like to pull cards on every full and new moon. But it's a good way just to check in, reset, see where you are, and, you know, make sure that you're aligning with all of your goals. So I am super into like positive self talk affirmations you know set goals and try to accomplish them it's like m motivation stuff not along yeah. the lines of like the huge like you have to work 98 hours a day in order to be successful because i'm working 99 like not all, not all into that but i am into like uh, you can definitely get your mind right you can focus it and, and you can you know huge into introspection that's one of the reasons why josh who's also one of my best friends and the co-founder finn do well together is it's like there is this level of introspection we're all in the pursuit of the truth let's try to find it so let me put that to the side i feel like i believe in all that i feel like t tarot tarot is that the correct pronunciation mm -hmm. tarot. i feel like that's way too close to like manifestation and oh just think about it <laughs> and it'll it'll appear in your life because that's just in my mind absolute bs it's like Man manifestations like things do not happen because you want them to things just happen um 
So it, okay, it's interesting. So you, You're... you simplified you simplified manifestation a lot, Connor. There's a lot of work that goes into that other than just thinking, oh, I really want an apple. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about it. Oh, the apple's not appearing. Okay? That's not how it works. No, I know You do that. have to have a level of effort and action behind the, the manifestation to make things come into fruition. But we'll save that for another topic. Save that for another topic. I, I don't know. It's <laughs> I have the exact same opinion, and, and I told you this before we got on the call about astrology it's like you explained to me how the how the arrangement of planets hurtling through the vacuum of space at the exact moment of your birth could have any impact on who you are uh, you know other than like the seasons right the seasons that exist exist as a result of you know the gravitational pull of the heavenly bodies on our little tiny planet earth it's like okay that's physics though that's not these aligned and the stars were this way. And as a result, I'm more likely to be pernicious. It's like, what? That's, I, I already told you, I think that's complete crap, but you know, go ahead. That That's okay. That's okay. I mean, you, you touched on a little bit, you know, the, the moon affects the tides yeah. and the ocean. Yeah. So I mean, we're, our body composition is made up of mainly water. You think that the stars can affect us if the moon can affect the tides and the ocean? Come on, Connor. I do not think no i do not think we can assume you know prove it you know that the the moon does affect the tides and we're i don't think a implies b in this case and actually <laughs> fun little physics tidbit um you know the way we perceive tides is that they're going in and out and in and out so it's like the tides are swishing around the earth but in reality what it is is the moon is constantly you know flying around the earth and the earth is rotating inside of um, the the water being pulled in one direction. So actually, wherever the moon is, it pulls the water on the Earth closer to it and actually creates the opposite effect on the other side of the Earth as well. So there's like these two, that, that's the tide. It's like the tide is the Earth spinning inside of this like ellipse of water that is created as a result of the moon. It's actually pretty cool. I do love that you, I do love that you know all that though, Connor. So I do love that. But you do know that tarot and astrology are, I mean, while they are, they crisscross, but they're not, they're not, they're not the same. Yes. They're, they're not directly. They're not directly the same. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do know that I have the equal opinion of both. Okay. Fair, <laughs> <So>. enough. <laughs> fair enough. So I mean, but okay. So don't think of tarot as astrology. Think of tarot as like a self-help journal. So if you get a self-help journal and it's going to give you a prompt to start yeah. writing on, right? So it's the same it's the same thing. So you pull a card, it's going to give you a prompt on things to start thinking about. So that's why they say, you know, astrology is very relative. Yes, it is. Tarot can seem, you know, really relative too, obviously, because it's all what you take from that card, how you apply it to your life and whatever you're going through, and then how you from there decide okay, well, what am I going to do about it now? So obviously this, the card will stir something inside you, make you start thinking about things. But then it's all up to you on the action that you take. So really, it's just another way to kind of stir that up inside of you to think about, hey, you know, what, what does this card bring to light? What, how am I going to apply this to my life? And, and is there, it's not like, oh, doom and gloom, you're, you're going to fail death card and you're dying next week. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> um, the, the death card can be just like rebirth, regeneration. It could mean the end of a project, you know, but it's really up to you to take, you know, where you are at in your life, like I said, and apply those things to your life and then whatever it pulls to the surface and then you can go okay well this has been this has come up to the surface and this makes me feel this way so i am now going to give it more attention because this out outcome that i am circling around that is maybe a little bit fearsome to me right now now i can think of potential ways to negate whatever negative outcome that i'm fearing in my mind from happening so i can take more preventative steps to you know, ensure that I have a beneficial outcome versus this one that maybe I'm a little nervous about. So like journaling and introspection and thinking about why do I think these things? Why do I believe these things? Getting down into like who you are, what you're doing, why you're doing it, what provides you fulfillment. It's like all those are incredibly valuable. So if that is all tarot That's is, all which it is, is, like That's helping, all it is. It's like how I explain ChatGPT, it's great to getting rid of the empty page, right? 
writer's block shouldn't exist because you just type in, give me 20 prompts for a science fiction movie that takes place in, I don't know, 7,000 years ago. You'd get 20 things to start writing about. So you're, you're explaining to me that tarot is like that, but for things that you should be introspective about, why is there this like cultural attachment of it to witchcraft and wizardry and like you go yeah, to the Renaissance sh- fair? Sure, it's like everyone's because... doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Be, yeah, because you've got these uh, these people that are like, oh, you know, I'm a fortune teller and the cards are telling me this. No, the cards are not telling you anything. The cards are telling you questions to ask the person to get them to give you information so that you can seem like you are a fortune teller. And I'm sure it's a tale as old as time where, you know, this is how people, you know, gypsies yeah. or whatever have made their money and it seems a little witchy and it does seem witchy, but... You don't have to be a witch. You don't have to be able to see the future. You just have to memorize the meanings for each card on the deck. So if you go in and you get a, you know, a tarot card reading, that person, all they have done is they have memorized what every card means and they know the specific questions to ask you. And then once you're in the room and they get you talking and they start, oh, well, maybe this or maybe that. And oh, well, and and that's where they kind of get that kitschy, like fortune seeing witchy vibe. But you don't, you absolutely do not have to go get your cards read you can go buy a tarot deck today and you can do your own reading every tarot card deck will come with a book um if you're newer to tarot i would suggest getting a deck that has an actual book with like deeper descriptions behind the meanings um because sometimes if you just buy the little decks and it comes with like a little flip book it doesn't give you like the meat and potatoes it's just going to give you a very brief overview of the cards so if you really want to do some De- deeper digging and introspection, I would recommend getting one with a, a book that explains it um, a little bit deeper for you, just so you can kind of do more work other than just saying, oh, well, you know, if it's death, it could mean, you know, the end of a project, regeneration, birth. You want more than three words if, if you're new to the practice. But it is absolutely self help practice. It is not witchy. Anyone can read their own tarot. Um, and I wish more people would see it that way instead of, you know, a witchy thing that, you know, they have to stay away from because, like, oh, I may get a bad reading or, oh, it's, you know, something that's going to. You could probably create, like, just take tarot cards call it something else like self-help visualization or something rebrand it make a ton of money just just an idea i don't know just a business idea for you I, I wish I had the time, Connor. I wish I had the time, but I, I do not. I ha, I did start bringing my tarot cards with me to the shows at the uh, all the trade shows we go to. So I'm sure you've seen me pulling cards for people um, at the different shows. And I was surprised at the level of interest I got from people. And I've loved being able to kind of redirect people's minds to thinking, like, hey, this is, this is something I can do for myself. I don't have to go pay to get a reading or look for a fortune teller or something like that. So it's it's been fun to see the process and the channel and how people are actually interested in it more now once they learn you know the art of intuitive tarot and it's not something you know that they have to pay for you can absolutely do it yourself what are some reactions that you get from from folks at these conferences um everyone i think is just like it's a little bit like the astrology is like oh my gosh you know this is so me or this is exactly where i'm at right now well of course it is because you're applying it to your life i'm just asking questions it's not anything crazy or magical (laughs) but yeah so it's the the light bulbs that click for people and i think they're just really appreciative of it because they're like oh wow you know uh, they're very appreciative to it's like looking putting on a a pair of glasses and looking at it through a different lens so they're appreciative for the the fresh perspective on something that you know they may not have thought of in that light before yeah it's it's hard to understand what your own internal and external biases could be anytime you're thinking something or doing something so connor you gonna you gonna let me pull a card for you sure let's pull it it's gonna be the death card okay i'm i'm manifesting it do you hear that I, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Okay, so I'm going to shuffle the deck, and then I want you to tell me, since normally I would have uh, I would have you shuffle the deck yourself so you can put your energy into the cards. I know you're not about that life, but it's okay. I'm going to shuffle. Wait, whoa. Is this, is this self-help or is this witchcraft? You tell me, right? We're getting into energies and whatnot. Hey, look, you know, you, you believe in energy too. So, okay, look, I'm shuffling. You tell me yes, when to stop. Newton's third law of energy. Yeah, and and we're just going to pull, we're just going to pull one card for you today. I'm not going to go into just the deep past, past presentation. We're just, 
Yeah, so tell me anytime. Stop. Stop? Okay. So I'm just going to pull the top card. All right. So oh, here we go. We pulled um, the six of swords. Okay, so this card represents progress, confidence, victory, public recognition, self-confidence, tri triumph. Okay. See, Connor, you didn't you didn't pull a scary card. It wasn't the death <laughs> card. Um, so, what are some questions that you would ask if you had your book in front of you? Um, are you presently in a in a place where you are experiencing a lot of progress? Have you felt like your confidence has risen anywhere recently in the specific area? What has been the contribution to that success? Have you had a specific victory lately? Specific victory lately? Progress, confidence. I don't know. Started going to the gym a lot more. That's definitely helped. <laughs> Is that it? Is that, that's the progress. All I right. Mean, well, yeah, like uh. When you when you get your uh, a lot of entrepreneurs actually in the whole realm of self help, it's like if you want to get your mind right, you got to get your body right first. Absolutely, yeah. And so, have you one, felt like since you've been going to the gym, you've seen like other little wins throughout everything? You feel like that's the that's the fire behind it. I definitely feel more like I have more energy, more focused, uh, and yeah, definitely more confident. It's like. Growing up, I was morbidly obese, so that definitely impacted my confidence as a kid. But I also played a ton of video. I was super in, not intros, oh, introspective, but uh, what is it when you don't like hanging out with other people? Introverted. Okay. Now yes. I'm the, now I'm the exact opposite. It's like I would love yeah. to be hanging out with everybody. So definitely, definitely a little different. Okay. Yeah, and it is a fire. It's a it's a fire card too. So that would make sense here. I'm gonna put it up to the camera so everyone can see. What is a fire card? Um, so I know you hate the zodiacs, but there are different zodiacs assigned to the different <laughs> cards. They are. Um, it'll just tell you like, so different zodiacs rest in different houses. So Leo, Sagittarius, Aries are all going to be fire signs. So this is just one that rests in the fire sign house, but it's a, it's an action card. So yeah. taking action. Yeah. So I would say if that's what you feel like is attributing to your success, keep at it, Connor, keep going to the gym. It's going to help raise that confidence. It's going to make all your projects, give you the energy to be successful in all your projects. And obviously the more confident you are, the more successful you will be. So I would say you're on the right track, sir. I would take this card as a, you are on the right track right now. Awesome. Well, thanks for the introspection and, and encouragement. It's nice. Uh, for folks who wanted to connect with you uh, or OIT, how would you suggest they do that? Absolutely. I will drop links for both the OIT and my LinkedIn pages. And then you can always uh, shoot me over an email if you have any additional questions at alex at oit.co. Awesome. Thanks for being here. It was a blast chatting with you, even if it was about, I'm going to call it self-help now, <laughs> not Tara. Yes, uh, so, self-help. It is. It's self-help. I'm going to buy I, you a deck, Connor. I'm going to buy you a deck. I can't promise I would use it, but I would appreciate the, uh, I would appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye. As always, everyone, thanks so much for tuning in to Gone Fishing. If you want to find out more about high-quality security awareness training campaigns, how to launch them in ways that actually engage employees to change their habits, then check us out, FinSecurity, at FinSec.io. That's P-H-I-N-S-E-C.io. Or click all of the wonderful links in our show notes. Thanks for fishing with me today, and we'll see you next time.